does Yu-Gi-Oh! Varanes have the potential to be the greatest Yu-Gi-Oh! series? I personally do believe that, but before I give my thoughts and opinions on that, let's just give a basic rundown of each Yu-Gi-Oh! series. We have Duel Monsters, which features Yugi Moto, Atim, Tristan, Joey, Junochi, Honda, Anzu, Teya. Everyone basically knows the original cast, so there's no need to expound more upon that. But the main plot for the first series by NES is of a pharaoh that lost his memories and the main goal throughout that series is to find his memories and throughout that journey you have villains that come in such as Merrick, Darts, Pegasus along with bandit thief Korra. But the thing is that the story is very consistent, the, the manga version. I don't know about the anime version, we do have a lot of filler that sort of gets off hand from the main story of a Tim finding his memory. Even though we can say that the darts arc is sort of, it sort of keeps true to that whole plot point of a Tim finding his memories because darts did freeze the memory tablet and negate a Tim from finding his memories. So we can sort of say that, but for the most part, I really don't think that the anime did a good job on keeping that story consistent. And let's move on to GX. Now, GX, I think it's basically for Judai to become dual king, as that's basically his main motivation from the first arc and from my viewing along with discussing with other people, because the thing with GX is that the first season, and that's basically what I've watched so far from my rewatching, I'm watching the Japanese version along with the English dub, is that there really is no main plot to the first 10 episodes, even I would say the first 15 episodes, there really is no main plot slash villain. It's rather just random shenanigans to sum it all up and to build up other characters. And to talk about 5Ds, 5Ds, the initial arc is basically to get in to Neo Domino City along with stopping Jack Atlas and for Yusei to make up for what his father did, which was the project known as Zero Reverse, which basically split Domino City and the satellite up and just made the satellite a shithole. And then you got your groups like Iliaster, etc. Everything I listed so far is a personal motive, is a personal agenda. The thing is that for all the Yu-Gi-Oh! series that I've seen, arcs are about personal motives. Let's talk about Duelist Kingdom. For Duelist Kingdom, Pegasus's motive was to save his wife, to save his fiance, whatever dub you prefer, and to make a clone of her through, or my bad, not a clone, rather a hologram through the Kaiba Corp, Solid Vision. And in the English dub, he needed the Millennium items to aid him in that. Uh, for Junochi or Joey, it was to pay for his sister's eye operation, Shizuka. And for Yugi, it was to save his grandpa along with sort of... Actually, no, I, I can't really say that because that happens later on. And what I was about to say was to help out Joey. But as I said before, that really happens later on in the arc. That's not his initial goal. Let's move on to Battle City. Battle City, Joey's main goal slash Junoji's main goal is to become a true duelist in Duel of Tim. For a Tim, it's to find out his memories. That's where that whole the memory plot point is really touched upon. Like that main arc is basically for Tim to find his memories memories. Along with Kaiba is that I wouldn't say it's a personal motive except for the fact that he must win that tournament in order to sort of calm his stress levels down and that is for him to beat a Tim in a duel and become the duel king. But another uh, reason for Kaiba participating and creating the tournament known as Battle City is to actually stop the rare hunters and ghouls from creating fake cards but for the most part, everything I've listed is a personal agenda. But the reason why I'm saying that Yu-Gi-Oh! Varanes has potential to be the greatest Yu-Gi-Oh! series is because the motives for the characters, as well as the plot, doesn't seem to have a personal connection towards the protagonist. And here's why. So we know about the Knights of Hanoi, along with SOL Technology and the Charisma Duelist, but we don't really get the introduction of the Charisma Duelist from episode 1, from the plot summary which I will link down below. We just know that Yusaku Fujiki is a person that stole, or I shouldn't say stole, rather took this AI program which is known as the Mysterious Life Form and these two groups, SOL Technology and Knights of Hanoi are after it. Now we do know the Knights of Hanoi are evil, they are basically a cyber terrorist group that hacks through dueling. As for SOL technology, we know that they created this 
new highly updated system that allows for a VR world and there's multiple worlds according to translations or well not it's not very much stated but if you read it off and analyze it there is more worlds that can be created so for the most part I would just say they're good guys but I'm not gonna say that simply because we don't know yet so right now I'm just gonna say that they're a neutral group that they want this for a good cause or it most likely belongs to them so if you read the episode 1 summary we don't really get information about Yusaku's past, which through weekly jumps along with V jumps, Yusaku's past is very important as they've said, NES and Shueisha and all of them. Everything comes back to Yusaku's past. Now we don't know about Yusaku's past, it might be something to do with the Knights of Annoy. He might have worked for the Knights of Annoy. that's possibly where he got his hacking abilities, skills from. Just to take that out of the picture because we don't have any information about it, and we, if we do go with this whole there is no personal agenda for Yusaku Fujiki at least for the main arc this most likely will be the main plot because it, it, it seems like a main plot like these two groups are after this one AI program and there's this one person along with his friend named Kusanagi who's a, who's another hacker well we don't know if he's Yusaku's friend we do know that they both have the same interest in things and this very much makes me believe that Varane's plot is going to be on a higher scale than just the characters I really do think that this is going to be like some sort of war that's going on some sort of thing that requires all the characters to fit in rather than just one thing that one main character named Yusaku Fujiki is facing and that it's just a problem that he has to solve and I really do think that this AI program along with the Knights of Hanoi trying to destroy the Lynx Varanes which is their main motive that a lot of these characters that a lot of the good guys the charisma duelist are gonna sort of chime in and help Yusaku and it really isn't gonna be about one one single character and one single character getting the spotlight and that all these characters are gonna have to play a vital role in order to stop this group this cyber terrorist group so, so that really makes me think that Varenz is gonna be the best Yu-Gi-Oh series because name one Yu-Gi-Oh series that utilized all the characters throughout the whole series that was a moment of silence because I guarantee you, you couldn't think of anything. So I'm hoping that Varenz does that. Not only that, the female characters seem like they're going to get a good lead. Now, okay, Ayoi Zizen, we do know that in her blue angel form that she is very much an idol. And you can just tell by looking at her, she looks like an idol. She looks like a person that people look up to, people follow. Along with that, we also got another character introduced, which was Emma Besho. Now, I don't recall having two female leads in the first few episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh revealed and that play a vital role. You look at Duel Monsters, Teya Nanzu, that's basically it. You, you could say it for the Toei series, but that's not by NES and that was just a decision that Toei made for the most part because the thing with Miho and she is the girl with purple hair in the Toei series, she was basically a one-time thing in the Yu-Gi-Oh manga. In the manga, she was use, uh, my bad, not use, but rather Trish and Honda's love interest and you know, Honda tried to get what they're in that chapter, but it, it didn't work. But not only that, we get two other female characters right off the bat, which I think is cool. And we get this wealthy, preppy looking dude who has some sort of relation with Aoi. And it's possibly her father, possibly her brother, Akira Zaizen. And I'm a believer, and this is just my personal theory about him, is that he owns SOL technology or he has some sort of vital role in that corporation. And looking at the other characters as well, we have that bully dude that look, that looks like Kudaragi himself. That's gonna that's very much seems and looks like he's gonna play that bully role. And in addition to that, we also have a character named Go Onizuka that the voice actor did say he wants uh, Go Onizuka's character to be similar to Shawn Michaels. And if you guys are fans of wrestling, and I recently got back into wrestling, but I did watch WWE when I was younger, and Shawn Michaels was still on Raw at that time. He's he's the best, and basically the word to sum him up, he's the best on the mic, his finisher is like badass, and not only that, he's a good wrestler to top it off. So we got an interesting as well as dope character named Go Onizuka. Even though from translations, I think it states that Go Onizuka is a jobber, which is basically a person that tends to lose a lot. But who cares if the character is funny, awesome, and even though he might not be the greatest duelist, that's still good enough for me. 
and also he thinks that Yusaku is a rival. That's basically all I wanted to say. I just think that Varane's is very much having a different story than most Yu-Gi-Oh's tend to have. And I do think that it's possibly going to be a good Yu-Gi-Oh series. And I also do believe that it's going to rank up on my list and possibly taking that number one spot from 5Ds. Currently, uh, I'm having a lot of 5Ds nostalgia with the dub. <laughs> Along with that, I'm watching a lot of sub clips and I'm really enjoying 5Ds. So that's why it's on my number one spot. But DM, as soon as I start playing some dub clips from DM and watching the sub version again, that's easily going to be on number one. So, Varane's might possibly take that spot on my list. Now, comment down below what you guys think Varane's is going to take on your list. What spot? Is it going to take the number two spot, which could possibly be GX? Or is it going to take the number one spot, which could possibly be 5Ds or Dual Monsters? I want to hear your guys' thoughts down below. And also, check out the Facebook and Twitter fan page regarding Yu-Gi-Oh! Anime News. And thank you guys for watching. I really do appreciate it.